let's go down just a little. By the way, I did make copies of the blessings and curses. Oh, did and you? And it's over there. Oh, and so fabulous. after service, be sure to grab one. And okay. I got it all on one, two pages. Two pages, but it's on one yes. front and back. Yeah, one sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we've been doing the covenants, and there's the ones we've done already. Noah, Noah Abraham, Moses, uh, and now we're working on David. Moses was also with the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. Who was that covenant with? The, the land of Israel, but where, excuse me, what mountain was that covenant made? Sinai. 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 Remember Mount Sinai? And so this is the time we're on Mount Sinai. They, we, last, or two weeks ago, what's the holiday that we just passed? Pentecost. Oh, Pentecost. And it's the first <laughs> Pentecost. Yes, that was the first Pentecost right. on Mount Sinai. That's Thank right. you. Okay. 50 <laughs> days in. I'm expecting y'all to remember. <laughs> <laughs> what? It was 50 days in. From, pe from, from Passover. When they, when the, well, from the Passover until they got to the mountain. Mm -hmm. That's you know, right. They had to travel through the Red Sea, all that mm -hmm. stuff. They got there, and it was all the same symbols. That's right. right. The fire. The noise, the wind, rushing wind. Noise. That's right. I mean, that's right. God is so cool. I, God matches his own word. Amen. <laughs> so now we're on David's covenant, and we'll just get going just a little bit on it. We will read Psalm 89, and maybe because of today, we'll just go. We'll just start in on David, the covenant house, and um, why this is so important. And we will also read Samuel 16 and 17. But if you want to read that this week, go ahead. Typically, I would read it today. But right now, we're in, we're in a place. But what we'll do today is we're just going to read just a little bit on these notes. And then we'll go back to first 16, uh, first Samuel 16 and 17. Oh, by the way, I read through almost all of First Samuel and Second Samuel this morning. Can I just say, oh, it's my favorite book. Yeah, do you ever do that? You go through First and Second Samuel, First and Second Chronicles, First and Second Kings. I go through them three or four. I can't leave them. I'll I'll listen to First and Second Samuel, and then I'll go. Let's go back to the beginning. I do that constantly because I love these three books. There are three three series of books. They are just the most powerful. So David's covenant is God's promises to David, and they are an extension and a confirmation of Abraham and Moses' covenant. Remember. Whenever we're talking about covenant, we're talking about it started in the Garden of Eden, it started with Adam, and it just built. It, God doesn't say, well, Adam's done, you know, that's, that, that covenant's gone. Nope, it just keeps on building. David's, the, David has promised the kingship both naturally and spiritually. Now, while we were singing those songs even this morning, I was thinking about the millennial reign, and I was thinking about how we will worship God during that millennial reign, but how David, it says, David will be my prince. Yes. We will know what it's like to sit under the kingship of King David, Whoa. and we will sit under the kingdom ruler, da uh, David, the kingship, would I say Jesus? Jesus <laughs> is the king, oh, yeah. the number one king, David and his prince. prince is David. Okay. So David is promised kingship both naturally and or spiritually, supernaturally too. It was God's desire that Israel have a theocratic monarchy, which is a government of a state by the immediate direction of God to establish them as a nation and a kingdom. As a theocracy, here's what a theocracy is. God is their king, sovereignly raised up ministries to lead them, beginning with Moses and Joshua, actually I'll get back up to Adam. Uh, right. God was the ruler, right? Even clear back to Adam, God was king. He was the one who those um, those patriots, we call them the patriarchs, but I love what Bill brought with the, with the um, no, uh, Melchizedek no priesthood. They were the priests of their family lines. The Melchiz uh, then they operated in a Melchizedek. They weren't uh, Israeli. There wasn't an Israeli yet, right? No, that's right. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't. But they they were a they were still. We're just one family. Can we just say we're one family? We're all from that. Okay. So God is their king, sovereignly raised up ministries. So not only with the patriarchs, but then with Moses, Abraham, Abraham, Moses, then through judges 
until Samuel, and then in the book of Samuel, we get to see Samuel, who was priest, judge, and prophet. Samuel was kind of like the amazing Ezra, who we love and we talk about the history of Ezra. Mm -hmm. But Samuel, oh my goodness, what a man of God who had the, who had the, uh, I love the story of Samuel, mm -hmm. who had the, uh, the uh, school of the prophets, yes. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he would have been followed around by all those men. Mm -hmm. They would have gone together. They would have worked together. They would have um, served the Lord and uh, judged Israel, helped judge Israel, and give wisdom and knowledge of how to deal with issues. Israel wandered away from the Lord into idolatry, immoral, immorality, violence, rebellion, and anarchy. Kind of like today. Mm -hmm. Not Israel, not just Israel, us. Mm -hmm. okay? the world. They demanded a king like the other nations instead of the type of king God desired to give them. God, did, God said, mm -hmm. remember he said, Samuel, mm -hmm. don't get upset. He said, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. Mm -hmm. I, God bless you. Bless Samuel, though. Okay. After the 40-year reign of Saul, God was able to make his covenant with David. Now, we'll, let's see. Let's go up just a little bit more. Wait a minute. I made those edits. I'm hoping my edits save today. Okay. The men of Achish. Um, so, as we go through Samuel, I want, I want us to pay attention because the men of Achish realized that David was the king of the land, and that was with the Abimelech story that we were just talking about, because he was King Abimelech, but it was the men of Achish who, all, who, they actually said it before King Abimelech agreed with them, that David was already king, and he, but they knew this man was in charge. Jonathan knew that David would be king, King Saul knew, and Judah anointed David the second time. Okay, my, my, my uh, notes did not say the, uh, isn't that interesting? Okay. Go on down, and I, I, have a, I know what we'll do right now. Let's go ahead and read Jonathan's covenant, because that was first. So let's go down just a little bit more. We'll come back and do all of that. Ruin Dynasty. I have a feeling that none of my... Because obviously oh, I don't have it edited. Okay. Okay. Let's go to... Yeah. Samuel. Okay, let's find it in our Bibles. It is in, it might be in 2 Samuel where the Josh, uh, Jonathan, I looked it up and I wrote it on here. This is where Psalm 89 also comes in. This is where Psalm 89 mm -hmm. also comes in. God's covenant with David. That's so. Samuel 7, so it has to be before that. <laughs> so is it I Samuel 3? In 1st Second Samuel. Second Samuel. Mm -hmm. David said, God be with you. I make covenant with you. No, that was Abner. God made, or David made a covenant with Abner, and then Abner was, of course, Dax Dungeon. Okay. Let's go back to. Has to be in First Samuel. Okay. I think it's right around. We're looking for David and Jonathan. Oh, oh, oh. And I think it's around Samuel 20. Because it would have been after, yep, Jonathan, it is 20, 1 Samuel 20. That's amazing I remember if I remembered a, an address. <laughs> That's a miracle. So let's read that and then we'll, we'll be right on with the time. 1 Samuel 20. And this is out of the message, so you're, we're going to get it a little bit different, all right? David got out of Na uh, Naoth. Na Na Naya, in Ramah, alive, and went to Jonathan. What do I do now? What wrong have I in, um, in, inflicted on your father that makes him so determined to kill me? Go back to, uh, uh, let me just go back to 19 real quick. Um, he did there in Naoth and Ramah, and he went there to Naoth and Ramah. Ooh, okay, Samuel was in Ramah. Samuel, is, is his okay. temple, his uh, place of worship was in I'm going to build Samuel's temple because I, or his tabernacle, because I already, I already have the rocks. Okay, so he, <laughs> then the spirit, <laughs> it's true, I have the rocks, I'm ready to build it. Okay, then the spirit of God was upon him, let's see, someone said indeed there, okay, hold on, this is Saul, 
so I'm going to go back to 19. He shot an, he shot an arrow. He shot an, yeah. Rama, Saul's the messenger to David. Okay, this is still when Samuel was king, or Saul was king, excuse me. He sent messengers, they prophesied like this. Then Saul sent the messenger again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then he also went to Ramah and came out of the great well that is in Siku. And then he asked, and he said, where are Samuel and David? Someone said, indeed, they are in Ramah. So he went there to Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also, and he went on and prophesied until he came to Ramah. Now this is Saul. Okay. And he also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel. And now I don't believe he stripped naked. I believe he took off his mantle. Yeah. He took off his, um, you know, they, they, we've got such weird ideas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what I say? Yeah. Okay. Because prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down. Well, it says naked. Our all day. He laid down all day. Naked. It just yeah. says, in <laughs> Maybe the he was. In the message it says it rip, he ripped his, off his clothes and lay there rambling gibberish. <laughs> Oh well, he might have been speaking in tongues, so I'm going to go with that, because it says the Spirit of God hit him. And you know what? It, they were asking, is Saul among the prophets? And, and um, listen, Mr. Message Guy. That's why I don't like the message. Oh, in the babbling, yeah, in the babbling trance. Yeah. Okay, keep going up. So this was Saul prophesying, prophesying, and then let's go to 20. Some of the message I'm okay with, some of them I'm like, ah. Okay, but, it, but okay, here's the deal. If you're reading to children, where you're not children. I'm just saying, sometimes if you get it in yeah. story form, right. yeah. you, you go, oh, I haven't heard it that way before, and that makes more sense to me. Okay, so that's why I do this. And I love the passion, because I feel like he's way better on the translation. Okay, David got out of Lima alive and went to Jonathan. Cause, because remember, this was when Saul was after him. Okay, what do I do now? The wrong, what wrong have I inflicted on your father that makes him so determined to kill him? If you can imagine a young David who has served Saul and now and loves Jonathan and they're best friends, and um, he's like, what have I done? And it's it's not anything that David did. David just happened to be at the right place at the right time to heal Goliath, right? And and the women just happened to sing the song, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousand. And boy, Saul was furious. So if you can imagine, this is what's happening. It's not, it's not that David did anything wrong necessarily, but David's this young kid. How many of you have young people in your life and you go, good grief, I wish they'd tame it. I know I was one of those kids. I was. I thank God for people who had mercy upon me and were like rolling their eyes but had patience and helped me mature. I, don't you thank God? Like, I, so like your mother. Like my mother. <laughs> mother especially. Yeah. My mother's still doing that to this day. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. It is true. Thank God we had people that were merciful to us. <laughs> And didn't, and didn't shut us down completely. They probably tried really hard. <laughs> okay. Um, but God knows what you're going to do later in your life, and you better have some, some of that. You know, if you're a world changer, I'm not saying I'm a world changer, but many of you are world changers. You are. I'm just saying if you're a world changer, you're going to have this thing in you that <laughs> nobody can shut off. And um, I, whenever we have fire camp, I'll tell mom, you know, moms, hey, mom, this one's a world changer. I'll say it because I, mm -hmm. I, I don't want them to break that spirit. Yeah. <laughs> because you've got, and that's a, it takes a huge amount of prayer because you've got to know how to not break the spirit, how to encourage the spirit the right way, mm -hmm. and how to set great boundaries. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we're learning, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You've done nothing, Jonathan said. You've done nothing wrong, and you're, you're not going to die. Really, you're not. My father tells me everything. He does nothing, whether big or little, without confiding in me. So why would he do this behind my back? It can't be. Um, Jonathan is in a certain amount of denial because he loves David. And he's like, Saul, even Saul loved David because he would have David come in and play and the evil spirit would go, right? Okay, so David said, your father knows that we are the best of friends. So he says to himself, Jonathan must know nothing of this. If he does, he'll side with David. 
But it's true, as sure as God lives, and as sure as you're alive before me right now, he's determined to kill me. Jonathan said, tell me what you have in mind. I will do anything for you. What a, what a friendship. Oh my goodness. I pray we well, And that. it's a covenant, another it is covenant. A covenant. So here we go. We're going to talk about the covenant. David said, tomorrow marks the new moon. I'm scheduled to eat dinner with the king instead. Instead, I'll go hide in the field. Okay, then, okay, let's go keep down. Let's go down just a little bit more because this is where, this is where Jonathan realizes this, is, this really is true. David hid in the field. Um, Jonathan said, David, my, David asked, oh, he said this to Saul. And then da and Jonathan really begins to realize what is happening. Saul really is. Saul explodes in anger at Jonathan. You son, and I don't like the word he used there. Don't you think I know that you are in cahoots with the son of Jesse, disgracing both you and your mother. For as long as the son of Jesse is walking around free on this earth, your future in this kingdom is at risk. Now go and get him. Bring him here. From this moment, he is as good as dead. Jonathan stood up to his father and he said, Why dead? What's he done? Saul threw his spear at his own son. That convinced Jonathan that his father was fixated on killing David. And it was really the evil spirit that was trying to kill David. Think about it. What would have happened had David died? Think about it. Because who came from David? Jesus. The That's right. Jesus. That Yeshua. That Jesus. Jonathan stormed from the table furiously angry and ate nothing the rest of the day upset for David and uh, smarting under the humiliation from his father. In the morning, Jonathan went to the field for an appointment with David. He had his young servant with him. He told the servant, run and get the arrows I'm about to shoot. And so the boy started running. Okay. And we all know what happened. Only Jonathan and David knew what was going on. Jonathan gave his quiver and bow to the boy, sent him back to town. After his servant was gone, David got up from his hiding place beside the boulder, then fell on his face to the ground, three times prostrating himself. Now, David is bowing, think of it, before the house of Saul. Yeah. He's blessing the house of Saul. And David never stopped blessing. He didn't. That's no, right. He didn't. Saul. That's right. No. Um, so this is a great lesson for us. Then they kissed one another and wept, friend over friend, David weeping especially hard. Jonathan said, Jonathan said, go in peace. The two of us have vowed friendship in God's name, saying this was covenant. We have vowed covenant in God's name, saying God will be the bond between me and you, between my children and your children forever. Boy, I apologize because... In my notes, I have where they said they actually exchanged bow and all the things that we exchanged, mantles. Mm -hmm. They exchanged all those things in actual covenant. Wasn't it blood, too? Didn't they? And blood, blood yes, covenant. because yeah. it was a blood covenant. Yeah. yeah. And so, so it makes you think, okay, so God, God is, I believe that God is ble well blessed Jonathan as a part of the kingdom the kingdom rule. Wouldn't it be interesting if David was able to put Jonathan as a pre, uh, prince under him, you know? Yeah. I, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But God knows that Jonathan and David were in covenant relationship, yeah. and God will, I believe God will honor that covenant there. Sure. And But we'll see when we get into that millennial reign and we see who God yeah. sets up as right. the government. But oh, I do wow. believe that Jonathan was innocent in that he loved he loved David, and he loved his father. Yeah, and yeah. he couldn't believe yeah. his father had taken on such yeah. a wicked stance. Yeah. So I will find that scripture. I apologize. Um, that's funny that when I transferred it, my notes didn't say. I noticed well, right away that the, my notes didn't say. The scripture is right after David killed Goliath, and they yes. come back. This is when Jonathan gives him his things as a right, way Right, because of, of the sword. And yeah. Right. Yeah. He gave him his armor. He his gave him his coat. He his, gave him his everything. 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 Because at that point, that was where he said, you are my friend. That's right. And that was where the covenant originally began. So that would but have been about, through this. So, uh, probably about 16, something, 16, 15 17. 15 or 16. 15, yeah. I've okay. got it all. Everything yeah. you had in your okay. notes, I've got. But yeah, for some we'll do it next and time. transfer, we'll do it. But anyway, that was, a, that was a great, we got just a good segment in yeah. to talk about the covenant between Jonathan and David. What a powerful covenant. 
And But I want us to remember that these covenants, these covenant relationships, this is how we can think of Jesus. It's not just that God is our ruler and he's up in heaven. He's also our friend. And this is a friendship covenant. Even, even the covenant, remember, that God had with Moses was called the friendship covenant. Mm -hmm. And so we are in covenant relationship with this God, this, this amazing God who we love, who we will serve with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. But we can call on the covenantal relationship and say, God, help me here. God, help me. I don't understand. I don't know what to do here. And, and we serve him, and he helps us. He's always willing to help us, right? He's yeah. never lacking yeah. in our covenant, in covenant relationship yeah. with us. We're covenant relaxed, right? Yeah. We're the ones who go, yeah. oh, I missed that one again. I'm yeah. so sorry. Oh, God, I called you evil just because you didn't answer my question yeah. right there. I'm yeah. so sorry. I did not mean that. So we have to be the ones who are quick to realize, oh, my goodness, I would never do that to my friend. Why did I just blame God for that? You know what I'm saying? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. yeah. So let's, you know, let's put the blame where it really rot lies. Usually on us. <laughs> Can be on the enemy. I don't even I don't even like to give him credit. That's right. <laughs> I don't like to talk it's about It's our flesh him. more often than not. That's right. It is. And it's what we agree with. And we'll talk about that very specific thing real quick here. So, Father, we just thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for today. How yes. good you are. Yes. <laughs> we love you. We love you. We love your presence. We want you to be here. We thank you, God, for the progress on the tabernacle. We thank you, God, for the tabernacle on the building, or the, the, the progress on the building here and what you're doing. We just give you all glory and honor. God, you just continually shock me and amaze me. I'm like continual shock and awe <laughs> at who you are and what you're doing. I just give you all glory. We just give you all the glory and all the praise. Let's just lift our hands and just thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Come on. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Let's just put our hands out and let's just ask the Lord to bring down the heavenly things that we need today to get us through this next week, to get us through this weekend. Lord, we just ask right now for your hand of mercy upon us. We need your help. God, I am desperate. I have no idea what I'm doing. And I will. you know that, Lord. You know, Father, we can prepare and prepare and prepare, but we still don't know what's going to happen. But we thank you <laughs> that you know and that it's you that is behind all of it. We just give you glory and praise. Now, Lord, we just thank you for your presence right now. Thank you, God. We give you glory. And we ask, Lord, that now, that as you bring down your spirit in this place, that you will bless our offering, that you'll bless our gift, that you will, Father, that you will multiply abundantly, not only in our own uh, cooking pots, but you will multiply our families. You will bring more babies into our families. Yes. We thank you, God, for a multiplication in so many ways. Multiplication in the kingdom. Multiplication in our church family. Multiplication on all levels, Lord, in wisdom, knowledge, and revelation. We just thank you, God. Because you're the covenant-giving God. You are the covenant-keeping God. You are the covenant. You are the one who, who brings all of those blessings, Lord. And you have... Um, kept us from those curses Lord you are the one who saves us and redeems us from the curse of the law of sin and death we just give you all glory and all mm -hmm. praise and honor. forever and ever forever and ever amen. 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 amen so the Lord bless you the Lord keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift his countenance upon you be gracious oh I just pray Lord right now the shalom of heaven would fall upon our nation. Lord, would the shalom of heaven fall upon our nation. Lord, as we see things transpire, as we see, Lord, we've been asking for everything to be exposed. Everything that's hidden will be exposed. We just thank you, God, that you're doing it. We thank you for how you're doing it. Lord, we would have done it a long time ago, but we know you're doing it perfect. We would have messed it up. You do it perfect. Your plan is perfect every single time. Thank you, God. Oh, my goodness, we trust you. I trust you, Lord. I trust how you're doing it. I trust how you're working in every single one of our family members. You're, you're, you're working in our, 
uh, our friends, our, the beloved ones we love, and all of those even afar off. You are working, you are ministering, you're bringing us closer. So we pray for the shalom of heaven upon our homes, our families, our vehicles, our pets, our land. In Jesus' name, enlarge our territory. If we want it enlarged, otherwise, keep it like it is. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. But, Lord, I pray right now that the sphere of influence will increase on everyone in this room, like we talked about at the beginning. We ask God for our sphere of influence to increase, mm -hmm. even if it's one person at a time, one influence at a time, we ask in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Would you give us the wisdom, knowledge, and revelation of what to do in, in how to wake people up how to knock on the doors that are squishy, how to, how to, um, how to bring truth into a lying uh, scenario. And we just thank you, God, and we give you all glory in Jesus' name. We love you, Lord.